Hey, what's up, Discovery Church? Welcome, welcome to the beginning of a brand new series that we are calling Wisdom Going Beyond Google. And I don't got any problem with Google. I actually like Google. I don't like Google here. Isn't Google awesome? We live in this information age. You can Google anything you want, and you can have the information readily available to you. I like it. It's a good thing. It's just not how it used to be, right? How many of you remember a day before Google? If you can stretch back that far. Yeah, before Google, it was all about, you know, the way you like learn something is, is usually what mama said, right? Mama, if mama said it, that's, what, that's the way it is. You remember, do you remember like the, what is it called? The water boy? Adam Taylor, you remember that? Remember the, the water boy? He's a, mama said, mama, my mama said. So there's a scene that I'm reminded of in the, uh, in, in the, in the college. He's going, he's going to college, you know, he's going to be a college, a college boy. And, uh, He's the professor asked him about the medulla oblongata. Remember that? Why, do, why are alligators so mad all the time? And he says, he's, he's not got the answer. Mama said it's because the alligators got all damn teeth and they don't got a toothbrush. So, uh, so they got toothache. And, and, and that was Mama said. And so, and so you know, the, the teacher tells him, you know, it's because the oversized medulla oblongata or whatever it is. And, and he says, no, Colonel Sanders, mama's right and you're wrong. You remember that? It's, it's, that's what it was. Before Google, it was what mama said. Now, or our daddy said, or whatever. Now, when I was, when I was a kid, I used to love drawing. I, I you know, I, and I, it was pretty good. My, my art was pretty good, but my daughter, Grace, 13 now, blows my stuff out of the water. She is an amazing artist, and she didn't take any school. She didn't take any classes. You know what she did? She Googled it. That's what she did, She's, and, she, and, and she had readily accessible right there was like tutoring and mentoring on, on art and the steps you're supposed to take and all this stuff that goes into it. And so now she's just, she's an amazing artist. Not only that, the girl's learning Japanese on Google. No, serious. And she's all trying to talk to me and stuff. And I'm like, honey, I'm not there. Okay. And so it, it's, it's awesome. Like Abigail, she, um, Abigail, she wanted cats. And uh, some of you know this story already. This is recently, it was a couple weeks ago, but for months she was, she was Googling information about cats and we'll watch different videos on how to take care of cats. And so she's like, dad, did you know? Did you know? I don't know if you've ever, you know, you know people that Google stuff a lot and they want to tell you all this like knowledge that they have. And so uh, Abigail was like that. I'm like, quiet girl, you don't know nothing. Huh? So, so now she's like, dad, did you know, did you know uh, that, that cats, they can't see very well at daytime. So actually when they're short sighted, so when you come close, it's a blurred vision. So that's why they have whiskers. The whiskers is actually what helps them catch their prey when when they get close to the, the mice, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. She just, so the, we're in the information age. There's just so much information readily available to us. But there's one thing that you cannot get from Google, and that is wisdom. You cannot get wisdom from Google because wisdom comes from heaven. Wisdom, true wisdom, comes from God. Now, there is this, it, it, let me ask you a question. If, if God were to like come to you and say, Hey, you get one wish, one thing, and I'll give you whatever you want. Think about that. Like one thing, God says, you know, one thing, I'll give you whatever you want. What would you ask for? Would you ask for, like, to win the lottery? Would you ask for a new body? <laughs> would you ask for a new wife? <laughs> new husband? I don't know. You'd ask for, what would you ask for? One guy got this opportunity in the Bible. His name was Solomon. So God, God, God was, looking at, he t- was looking at Solomon's life, and he said, man, I'm so pleased with how you're living. Ask for whatever you want. For those of you that don't know, Solomon was the son of King David, who became king of, of Israel. The story's right there in 1 Kings chapter 3. And so God tells him, ask for anything. I'm so pleased with you. I'll give it to you. And Solomon asked for wisdom. And that pleased God so much that God said, God said because you, you could have asked for pe- fame, power, possession, money. You could have asked for all these things, but you didn't. I'm not only going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to give you all that other stuff that you didn't ask for as well. So fortunately, Solomon goes on to write a book in the Bible. So we get to, we get to glean from this wisdom that came from God that Solomon operated in, and that's called the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. So this study of wisdom is actually a study we're going to be looking at the book of Proverbs over the next several weeks together. Now, if you want to learn how to get along with God, you read the Psalms. That's how you get along with God. That'll teach you. Get along with God, you read the Psalms. If you want to learn how to get along with man, you read the Proverbs. That's what Pro- Proverbs will teach you how to live this life and get along with man. Proverbs chapter 4, this is our theme verse for the series, <clears throat> says, getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. 
Now this is, okay, this is the word of God coming from the wisdom of God. I don't know what is like the most important thing in your life or what is like the pursuit of your life, but according to God's word, the most important thing that you could do and pursue in life and get in life is wisdom. Okay, so let me give you a, 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 like a working definition of wisdom for this series. What, to define wisdom, our, our definition of wisdom for this series is this. It's not in your notes. It's up here on the screen. You may want to write it down. Wisdom is seeing and responding to life from God's viewpoint, okay? Wisdom is seeing, it has, it has to do with your vision, what you are seeing, and it's responding to life. So there's action there's to, to it as well, to life from God's viewpoint. So here are the two parts of wisdom. The two parts of wisdom are revelation and response. Revelation, because it comes from God, it's therefore revelation of God. You can't learn it, you can't read it, it comes from heaven. It comes from God, and it is response, revelation and response. See, the reason why some of us aren't operating and walking in wisdom is because the way you see life, the way your, your perspective in life is off, it's wrong. You, you view life through the lens of your hurt. You view your life through the lens of your problems, through the lens of your pain, through the, through the lens of, of this world, through the lens of what mama said. I don't know what it is, but it's not through God, and it's not through the word of God. So the reason we're not operating in wisdom because we don't see life the way God sees it, and then we don't respond to life the way God would have us respond. Wisdom, wisdom, and I'm hoping that in this series, my goal actually today is that you would come to the agreement with me that, that no matter what you are pursuing, like today you came in pursuing some, some things, but you leave here today with this understanding that one of the most important things that you can do in life is get the wisdom of heaven. Amen. That is the, one, the most important thing that you can do in your life is to get the wisdom of God. Let me show you why. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 16 through 18, it says, Wisdom is more valuable than precious jewels. Nothing you could want can compare with it. No matter what you're pursuing, nothing compares with wisdom because wisdom offers you some things. Wisdom has some things to offer your life. Check it out. It offers a long life. You say, how does wisdom offer you a long life? Well, you're going to get wisdom on how to handle the challenges and the things that stress you out and you lose sleep over and which is shortening your life because you're stressed out and losing sleep over. Wisdom is going to help you make not only see that correctly, but respond to it correctly with the wisdom of God. Therefore, you're going to live longer. Yeah. Wisdom has to offer you a long life. Look what else. Wealth and honor. It can make your life pleasant and lead you safely through it. And those who become wise are happy. Man, no wonder Solomon asked for wisdom, right? Because, I mean, it's not like I want all these other things, but, but man, I, I'd rather have the key to all these other things, and wisdom is the key to a long life. Wisdom is the key to security, to honor, to wealth, to happiness, to pleasure. Wisdom is the key to everything you're looking for in life. Can I get an amen? The wisdom of God is what you need today. You don't need those things. You need the wisdom of God. That's why Solomon asked for it. So today, uh, to use a springboard into the topic, I want to contrast some things with you. Uh, I want to teach you how to learn the wisdom of heaven today. That's what we're going to do to kind of you know, unfold the topic of wisdom and Proverbs to learn the wisdom of heaven. But in order to do that, I'm going to use the book of James to, to expose the, the wisdom of this world, earthly wisdom, because there, there is a wisdom that comes from heaven, but there's also a wisdom that is earthly and worldly that, that possibly today, and I've been praying that God would give you revelation today, that you would get the revelation of God, that maybe, quite possibly, that we are being influenced by the, the wisdom of this world more than we think. And maybe we let some, some, uh, the enemy in just a little uh, a foothold or a little creak in the door to let the wisdom of the world dictate how we feel, think, and respond to life. Okay, let's go to James chapter 3 together and see what James has to say about it. He actually has a lot to say about wisdom as well. We're going to look at James a lot today as well as Proverbs. He says, who is wise and understanding among you? Which time out right there? Just ask yourself that question. Be, who is wise? Who, who is wise and understanding among you? And chances are your mind will go to someone who's like a smart or knowledgeable person, but knowledge and wisdom are not the same thing. Knowledge is in the head. Wisdom is in the heart. Amen? 
A wise man will have knowledge, but a knowledgeable, knowledgeable man won't necessarily have wisdom. It, it's been said that, that knowledge can build a house, but wisdom builds a home. You can be knowledgeable about the Bible, but wisdom walks with God. You see, wisdom takes it to a whole deeper level. It does. So he says, let me show you real wisdom. It's not smart people. It's not academic degrees. There's nothing wrong about that. I got some as well. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not wisdom. Wisdom, he says, let me show it to you. Wisdom, let them show their wisdom by their good life. And for many people, Christianity is something you believe. It's not something you live out. The, the, and there's going to be a lot of that quiet stuff throughout this message. It's, I'm, I'm coming right at you today, okay? Um, for many people, it's not. Wisdom, the, Christianity is something that we believe. It's not something we live out. And how can I say that? Because the, the statistics tell us that. The, a lot of the statistics about what's wrong with the world and our culture and stuff, if you measure the statistics of, of, of the world against like the church and those who call themselves Christian, a lot of those statistics are the same. Sometimes they're even worse in the church. Why? Because we bought into the wrong wisdom. We're operating by the wrong wisdom. He says, by deeds done in humility that come from wisdom. So how can I be a person who sings the songs, reads the books, attends the stuff, and, and has the knowledge, but not have that play out in my life? He addresses that next. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom, he says, that kind of wisdom, in quotes, does not come down from heaven, but it is earthly. So we have this contrast. There's a wisdom from heaven, and then there's a wisdom that is earthly, he says. Not only is it earthly, he says, um, spiritual. It's of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder in every evil practice. Which, time out right there, and I just want you to think about, just think about your life. And not your life in here, because everyone's fine in here, right? I'm talking about your life out there, okay? Everyone, everyone's, we're all fine in here. Think about your life out there, and where wisdom or the lack of wisdom shows up most in our life is in our relationships. Think about your relationships and what's going on in your relationships. Is there disorder? Is there chaos? Is there every evil practice? Um, there was these, these three guys that bought into the wisdom of this world, earthly wisdom, and they went to this seminar, and they got taught how to put their wives in check. So it was, it was three weeks later, these guys get back together, and they tell the story about what happened. They, they, they practiced this, this, this wisdom they were taught in the seminar. So the first guy says, you know what? I, I went home, and I told my wife, things are about to change around here. Uh, you're gonna get, we're going to get some things in order in this house. And, and he said, I didn't see anything the first week. I didn't see anything the second week. But about the third week, I started to see some change. And the second guy said, same thing happened to me. I went home. I was like, things are about to change around here, honey. You know, we're going to get some stuff in order. Things are about to change. And, and, and he said, I didn't see anything the first week. Didn't see anything the second week. But the third week, I started to see some change. And the third guy was like, hey, similar thing happened to me. I went home to my wife. Hey, things are about to change around here, honey. We're going to get this house in order. He said, I didn't see anything the first week. I didn't see anything the second week. But about the third week, I started to see again out of my right eye. Come on now, that's funny. I don't care what you say. That is funny. Now listen, this, this is, this, that's, that's what a, lot, a picture of a lot of our homes look like. There is yelling and chaos and fighting and there's screaming and, and disorder and every evil practice. Now, now please listen. I mean, we're all in the same hospital. Though. All of us have issues. All of us have the same kind of fight, the same battles and things like that. But can I tell you something? That can't continue. What you need, you don't need more information. You don't need more answers. You don't need to Google how to fix it. You need the revelation of God. You need the wisdom of God. Okay, that's what we need to, 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 to operate in those relationships differently. Because the wisdom that comes from heaven, he says, is first of all, is pure, then peace-loving, and considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. And that's where we're going in this series. We're going to teach you the wisdom of of heaven, because peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. And that's what I want for your life. I want you reaping a harvest of righteousness because of the wisdom of God operating in your life. Amen, church? So James talks about the earth's wisdom that I want to kind of expose a little bit with us and ask God to give us some revelation because the philosophy of our culture, the philosophy of this world is messing people up. 
It really is. I mean, some of it's just silly. Some of it don't make no sense. It's just a, it's the philosophy of the world. It's it, like, okay, we can't get you to stop using drugs, so we'll just legalize it. What the, he- what the heck? Come on now. That's just dumb. That is dumb. I was reading some things this last week, the last couple of weeks, and there's this thing now called, I think it's called polymory. It, there's, it's, it's where four or more people cohabitate and are in relationship with each other. This is a thing. This is like a real thing that's happening where they go, I'm going to be with you Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Then I'll be with you Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then you're my Saturday, Okay. And, and this is, I'm serious, it's the culture that we live in that's just twisted. Uh, like reading things nowadays on how to raise your children. Oh, I, I want my children to be an individual, so I, don't, I try not to control them, and they have freedom of thought. You better spank that child, right? <laughs> you don't spank that kid, I'm going to spank that kid. That's the wisdom of this world, it's just silly. And you know what, it doesn't even take me to come up here and tell you all the ways that the wisdom of this world is just messing people up because you can see it for yourself. What is the, if there is disorder and every evil practice is the result of earthly wisdom, is it not? Is there not disorder in our culture today? Is there not evil practice rampant in our culture today? Why? Because they're operating by earthly wisdom. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way that appears right. And you'll see it. You're going to read it. You're going to see it on the news. You're going to read it on the internet, whatever it is. You're going to go, well, that makes sense. That, 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 sounds, that sounds about right. That sounds, that sounds good. Yeah. But in the end, it leads to death. And it's destroying marriages. It's destroying bodies. It's destroying homes and families. It's destroying lives He said that earth's wisdom has three characteristics. I want you to write these down, the three characteristics that earth's wisdom has. Here's number one. The earth's wisdom is worldly. Earth's wisdom is worldly. So what he's saying is that we're allowing too much of the world to influence us. We're allowing too much of the world to come in and influence us. And I don't know where that is for you. It's different for everybody. It may be, but it could be the TV it could be the radio. It could be the music you listen to. It could be the friends that you're around. It could be from a variety of different places. But I'm giving you a loving warning as your pastor who loves you. You need a world filter. Every one of you, every one of us need a world filter, especially the young people who are in the church today. Please hear me. You cannot go out into this world where the, it's under the dominion of darkness and, th- and just kind of openly take everything that it has to throw at you, consume, consume, without a filter. That you filter, you need a world filter. How much of the world is influencing us? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 says. It says, where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world. And I guarantee you that God will make foolish the wisdom, the so-called wisdom of this world. It'll happen right here on earth. It'll be made foolish or it'll happen when every knee bows and every tongue confess that the truth will be exposed and the foolish of the foolishness of this world will be exposed as well. I just don't want God to show you to be a fool. That's what I don't want as your pastor. That's why you need a world filter. Can I get an amen? Here's the second thing the Bible says that the earth's wisdom is and has, and that is, it is, remember he said it's unspiritual. He wasn't talking about, you know, spirit, like your spirit man. He's talking about your emotions. So write it down this way. It is sensual. Earth's wisdom is sensual. In other words, part of the wisdom of this age is if it feels good, do it, right? If it feels good, do it. Yeah, you can trust your feelings. Can I tell you something that can save your life? You can't trust your feelings. Your feelings will lie to you. Since when are our feelings a good barometer of truth? It's not. It's not a barometer of truth. And if you're going to call stuff right just because you feel that way, you're going to be in a mess. But now we have this philosophy out there that says, oh, no, it's how I feel. Therefore, it's right. Just because you feel it doesn't make it right. It doesn't. I don't live by feelings. We're called to live by principle. Not by feelings, but the principle of God's word. I make my body line up to the things that are true. I don't trust how my body feels about truth. I say, body, you're going to obey truth. Okay, I'm getting all up in your business today. I know. 
But that's where we're going today, and, and I'm sorry. It's just it's where, we need, where we need to go. Are you listening to me, church? And honestly, this feeling-based philosophy is destroying people's lives. It's really what we were saved from. Titus chapter 3 actually says that's, what, that's who we used to be. That's where we're saved from. Titus 3 says, at one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. So in other words, you were just doing what your body wanted to do. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Man, the haters. Aren't there a lot of haters out there? People just hate things all you go on Facebook, I'm tired of Facebook, man. There's so much hate going on. I hate this. I hate that. I hate this restaurant. I hate you. Hate, 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 hate. My gosh, take a chill pill. Quit it with the hate already. Anyway, that's my just soapbox. Okay, but when kindness, when the kindness and love of God of our Savior appeared, he saved us from all that. He pulled us from our feelings-based living. And then James, he gets real blunt in this last description of earthly wisdom. Remember, he said, it's of the devil. Write it down this way. Earthly wisdom is demonic. Earthly wisdom is demonic. And I know that's a pretty strong word. Some of you are thinking, are you saying that perhaps the way I'm living or the way I'm thinking could be demonic, Pastor? Yeah, I am. I am. Now, now maybe you're not possessed by the devil, but maybe you're listening to his whispers. Okay, because when I talk about, you know, demonic things and stuff, some of your minds go to like to exorcisms and, and paranormal activity and stuff like that. That's not what I'm talking about at all. Look, a lot of you here are bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that devil can't inhabit you, but you sure can listen to the whispers of the enemy, buy into some earthly wisdom. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that operation is happening in our life. How can I say that? Well, because the selfish pride is what got Lucifer kicked out of heaven in the first place. That's why, that's why he got kicked out of heaven. Selfish pride is a manifestation of demonic earthly wisdom. Can I say that again? Because selfish pride, it looks like it appears to be smart and ooh, good and clean, clean. Selfish pride is a manifestation of demonic wisdom. That selfish ambition and envy, and in it is disorder in every evil practice. The world is going this way. The world is going further and further in this direction. But I, what I'm saying is not us, church. Not us. We're going to draw a line in the sand and say, you know, I'm not buying in to that garbage anymore. I'm going to stand for principle. I'm going to stand for truth. I'm going to stand for righteousness, for the wisdom of God. Look what John chapter 8 says. He says, you are of your father, the devil, I haven't preached in two weeks. I know I'm jacking people up today. Okay, this is what happens when I don't preach in a couple weeks. And it is your will to practice the lust and gratify the desires which are characteristics of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks, he speaks falsehood. He speaks what is natural to him for he's a liar himself and the father of lies in all that is false. So could it be that we're buying into listening to some whispers of the of earthly wisdom. Well, the Bible says that we can be different. The Bible actually says that we can learn the wisdom of heaven. And I don't care what your background is and how edu what education you have, how even old or young you are, you can learn. Everybody in here can learn the wisdom of heaven. It is available. God has made it available to every single one of us. There's actually a scripture, Proverbs chapter 120, says that wisdom calls out in the streets for anyone to listen. Are you listening? God has wisdom available. Hear, hear me, wisdom says. Are you listening? Wisdom is available. You can learn it. You can learn wisdom. That, look what Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 says. It says, learn to be wise. Like, you can learn this. Learn to be wise and develop good judgment. How do you want to learn the wisdom of heaven? How many want to learn to be wise? Raise your hand if that's you. You've got a few of you here. There you go. Amen. All right, let me give you five things, five things that you can kind of Apply to yourself. Five ways you can begin to learn the wisdom of heaven today. It's an acronym for learn just because I want you to kind of receive it today, okay? Here's, what the, here's the first point I want to give you. If you want to learn the wisdom of heaven, you have to do this. Number one, you have to listen to God's word every day. Listen to God's word. And the key is every day. If wisdom comes from God and it is revelation from God, then I need to be listening to God every day day. What are you listening to? Proverbs 1, 7, the message paraphrase says, start with God. That's where you start. Start with God. 
The first step in learning is bowing down to God. The other translation says that you're might familiar with, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it's not the fear as in like you're afraid of the man or the God. No, no, the fear is in the awe of his holiness and nature that causes you to prostrate and lower yourself and say, you are God and I am not. You are holy and I am not. You need to be listening to God every day. Why? Because it comes from God. Wisdom comes from God. Not in your notes. Proverbs 2 and 6 actually says that. It is the Lord who gives wisdom. From him comes knowledge and understanding. You don't get it from the television. You don't get it from the internet. Wisdom comes from God. So let me give you a question. How many, how many believe everything you hear on the news, r- see on television, read on the internet? How many believe everything you see, read, and hear on the internet? Yeah? Yeah? No, hardly anyone. There was one of you. I'm going to pray for you later. But I mean, just... Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, no. How, okay, here's another question. How many of you believe that everything in God's word is true? Come on, how many believe that? Okay, look at that. So, okay, let me ask you then this a follow-up question. Why do we spend more time reading and listening to that which we know is false than that which we know is true? Two, two, on, two on that, you guys. Proverbs 15 and 14 says, a wise person is hungry for truth. They have an appetite, a craving for the truth, but the foolish feeds on trash. You can either feed on truth or you can feed on trash, and whatever you fill your mind with is what's going to come out. Garbage in, garbage out. Some of you are wondering why that stuff keeps coming out of your mouth, and that, that's, it's because garbage in, garbage out. There are three kinds of things you can fill your mind with. There's, there's three kinds of things. You can fill your mind with poison, you can fill your mind with junk food, and you can fill your mind with healthy food. And just these are just side notes, okay? Just poison, junk food, and healthy food. Poison are the things that are poisonous to your system, like pornography. Pornography is poison. It'll poison your system. You should not be reading Fifty Shades of anything. <laughs> if, if you are, you are a fool. I'm telling you, you, you are. A wise person does, does not allow poison into their mind. A wise person will, wears the helmet of salvation. A wise person does not just ingest anything that's out there in the world to poison and contaminate their spirit. That is not wise. That's not wise. That's poison. The junk food, junk food is like, it's not neither good or, or bad. It's, it's just junk. There's nothing wrong with junk food except it has no nutritional value. It has no nutritional value. And most of the stuff that you see on TV nowadays, it's not evil, it's not bad, it's just junk food. But the problem is with junk food is when you stuff yourself with it, you're no longer hungry for truth. So when you feed on trash, you're not hungry for truth. So when you watch television and you binge watch your Netflix whatever for four hours or 12 hours, after that, you're not wanting to go read the Word of God because you're full of junk. So so it's not that it's good or bad. It's just that you just got too much junk in you. And and, and so you're you're just full on empty calories. You ate a whole bunch of empty calories, and therefore now you're not hungry for truth because you fed on trash. Ooh, amen, pastor. Come on. The wise person, though, the wise person, though, feeds on truth. It feeds on, it's the health food. It's the word of God. God, to listen to his word every day. So in this series, here's my challenge, and we've developed a Bible reading plan for the wisdom series. We're going to read through the Proverbs throughout this series together. You can, if you haven't downloaded the Discovery app already, go to the, your app store, download the Discovery Church app, and we have on the bottom there where it looks like some checklists, it has reading plans, and you can subscribe to the wisdom going beyond Google reading plan. And we're together. We're going to feed on God's truth. We're going to read a proverb a day, sometimes two a day, to get God's word in our lives so that we can feed on truth and learn to become wise. Can I get an amen? Amen. So if you don't have the app, go online again. That's the first step. Listen to God every day. Here's the second thing that we need to do. If you want to learn the wisdom of heaven, here it is. Number two, we have to enlist friends who challenge us. I need to enlist friends who challenge me And sometimes the problem with this is the only people that we've given the platform to speak into our life don't walk in the wisdom of God. 
And so, so not only is that unwise, but that is insecure. So you're not giving people the platform to speak into you and talk to not just your knowledge, but to your heart, to the heart of your issues or the problem. And if you're going to be wise, you got to get some wise people in your life. If you want to soar with the re- eagles, you can't run with the turkeys, okay? You don't, and if you don't have them, you need to enlist them. Who, who you hang around with is who you're going to become like. That's why we're so big here at Discovery about small groups, and we talk about it so much, because you need to put some healthy friendships, relationships, some godly relationships into your life. You can't grow in wisdom apart from relationships. This is important. You want the wisdom of heaven? I'm talking about the wisdom of heaven, not this wisdom. You cannot grow in the wisdom of God apart from relationships. You can become a hermit. You can become a monk. Go to the top of a mountain somewhere. Read all you want. Take a vow of silence and read everything there is. You will not grow in wisdom, not one bit. You'll grow in knowledge. Why? Because wisdom has to do with our relationships. It's all about relationships. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20 says, Spend time with the wise and you'll become wise, but the friend of fools will suffer harm. Do you have anybody in your life who's giving you input for good, who's giving you input for God, who's, who's speaking to the heart of you, the real you, not just the surface you and the knowledge and intellect you, but do you have people in your life that have been given the platform to speak into your life on a regular basis? Well, I don't know if I need that, Pastor. I'm kind of, I'm doing okay with the friends I got and stuff. Oh, really? Proverbs 12, 15 says, fools think they need no advice. Mm-hmm. But the wise listen to others, which, which leads me to the, the third point here. If you want to learn the wisdom of God, the wisdom of heaven, you need to be able to, number three, accept correction. Accept correction. Raise your hand if you love to receive correction. Come on, where are my masochists? Yeah, right. Yeah, a few of you like it because you're, you're weird, okay? Um, but a lot of, I mean, I like the result of correction, but I don't like the taste of correction. It hurts. Doesn't it hurt? Like, to me, it's like a, a gut punch or something. Correction is like the medicine you need, right? It tastes disgusting, you know? I try to give my kids antibiotics. They're still on liquid and stuff. They're all throwing it up and stuff. I'm like, you need it, though. You need this. It's what's going to make you better. Correction is the medicine of God that he uses to transform your life, that he uses to develop you, that he uses to grow you. Medicine is useful for that. It don't taste good, but it, it's, it's a tool that God, actually 2 Corinthians or 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 actually says that the word of God is useful for teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training in righteousness. That that is part of God's nature is to correct. And if you want to be wise, you need to be able to accept correction. And one of the simple ways that we reject correction is is always thinking that the sermon is for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's good, pastor. Mm, Say that. Oh, amen. And you're receiving revelation and you're like, I wonder if she's hearing this. Come on now. Is he here today? Oh, thank you, Jesus. He needs this, right? I, he elbowing your husband, grilling, digging into him. You don't think I see that. I see that. I see that. Thinking it's always for somebody else, that you're not receiving it for yourself. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17. Whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life. And whoever ignores correction, look at this, leads others astray. I want you to think about that for a moment. What it's literally saying that will lead others astray if I don't know how to accept correction. So if I'm unteachable and I resist correction, I could literally lead my children astray. I could could lead my coworkers astray. I could lead my community astray. I could could impact negatively my church. This is huge implication by not accepting and receiving correction. You may want to add a little something onto this point, though, okay? You know, for those who, you know, want the wisdom of God, Accept correction, write in maybe from wise people. That's always good. Like, and I need to just speak to this for just a moment because correction sometimes can come from unwise sources. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Correction can, because I got to say this, because some people think they have the gift of correction or the gift of criticism. And to that, I would say that is not a gift, okay? You're, you, you, yeah, that, is, that is the gift of, of the devil. And, I'm, and you, it's funny, but no, it is, because the devil is called the accuser of the brethren. 
So when you sit there and accuse everybody all the time, you're actually being a tool of Satan, not a tool of God. I just need to speak to this because you need, if you accept, we need to accept correction from wise sources. Let me give you the two, to do, two unwise sources of correction, misperception and miscommunication, mis, uh, misperception and misinformation. A lot of times that can be a source of unwise correction. But you know what? The wise, the wise know how to take even the most sinful uh, c- corrections coming from the wrong heart, coming from the wrong place, and still be able to find the diamond of truth in it. The wise are able to do that. See, I, sometimes I, I get stuff thrown at me from people who are prideful, arrogant, conceited, selfish. They have, they come, and, and, and I can tell where it's coming from, but, but I don't get all like puffed up like, who are you? No, 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 because there's a diamond right in there somewhere. Thank you very much for that. And I'll take that one. The rest are going gonna to fall off my shoulders like, like water off a duck's back. The wise know how to find the diamond of truth, even in the most cynical and sinful of corrections. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 8. Never correct conceited people because they'll hate you for it. How many can testify to that? Ever, ever tried that one? But if you correct the wise, they will respect you for it. They'll thank you for it. One, one scripture in Proverbs chapter 20 says um, that the, the, the wounds of a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Meaning, meaning they just, you know, someone who's not really your friend just kiss up to you. Oh, you look good today. Oh, you did a great job. You, you did great. You're such a good... No, the, the, a real friend will tell you, man, you did terrible today. Did you study? You know what I mean? Like, I didn't, you know, I didn't get that. A, a, a real friend will wound you with the truth every now and then. Someone who's not your friend will just, they'll just multiply kisses. You need to be able... If you want to be wise, you got to be able to accept correction. Here's another one. You want the wisdom of heaven. Here it is. Here's number four. We need to ready yourself for revelation. Oh, this is so important. Because wisdom comes from God. It is revelation and response. You need to ready yourself. I'm talking about posturing your heart to posture your life for the revelation of God. So what does it take? What does it take to receive revelation from God? Two things. You need to be hungry for it, and you need to pursue it. Revelation of God does not come for those who sit idly by or who are not sitting on the last revelation God gave two years ago. It comes for those who are hungry for it and who pursue it. Look what Jeremiah 33 says. God says, call to me. That word call in Hebrew, it actually means to cry out loud in a very loud voice. It says loud twice. That's actually the word there. Cry out loud in a very loud voice to me, and I'll answer you, and I will tell you great and unsearchable things that you don't know. Picture a person desperate enough to open their heart fully and issue a deep cry of the Spirit. Listen, the, the, the casual prayer receives casual revelation. The deep cry of the heart receives the deep things of God. I mean, if you, if you want the revelation of God, you need to get hungry for it. You need to cry out to God for it. You, need, you don't need more information. You don't need more answers. You don't need to Google that anymore. What you need to do is cry out to God. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. You need to ready and posture yourself for revelation. James 1 says, if you need wisdom, you just got to pursue it. Man, you just got to go ask God. He's generous. He's a generous God. He's, he's going to give it to you. you. He won't even rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, check it out. Be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person of divided loyalty, meaning I, 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 mean, I buy into some of the wisdom of God. I mean, I, 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 I like some of the Bible, but there's some of this other, I mean, I, someone who has divided loyalty, he says they're like a wind of the sea, tossed to and fro. The next verse actually says that person who is divided that way, who isn't totally bought in to God in his ways and his principles, should not, re- should not think they would receive anything from God. So yeah, ask him, be hungry for it, but make sure you're standing on the right side of truth. Amen. <laughs> Come on, ready yourself for revelation. I just want to, I'm trying to set you up today just to receive wisdom, to walk in wisdom, to learn. You can learn this. You can learn the wisdom of God. Here's the last thing that we need. The N stands for now do it. Now do it. And I'm not talking about like now go 
go be wise, go do it, go be wise. No, 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 that's not. Now I'm, I'm talking about now do the revelation. Now, now remember, revelation is what? Our wisdom is what? Revelation and response. It, it, it kind of moves beyond what God has said and God has shown to responding to the revelation, to acting on the revelation, to now doing what God has told me to do. Now do it. Do it. Let me kind of widen up. It's not only, wisdom is not just revelation and response. I want to widen the response just a little bit because wisdom always starts with revelation. This isn't in your notes. I have it up here on the screen. I just want to show you something. Wisdom, the wisdom of, of God is the revelation of God. You, you, you can't read this. You can't learn this. You can't pick it up. It's, it's God's. He, he, you, need to, you need to cry out. To, it starts with revelation. But then after revelation, there's, there are always, wisdom always has a response. And I, had, I, I wrote it down like this on my screen, experience. You need, to, you need to step out and experience the revelation now. You need, to, you need to go and do it. You need to respond to what God has told you. Some of you are waiting for new revelation, but God will never give new revelation until you start responding to the revelation he gave you two years ago, until you start stepping out and experiencing God's word and his revelation to your life. How I many you know wisdom, the, wisdom takes experience, right? How I many you know that? The wisdom takes experience, but you got to have the right experience to have the wisdom of God. You see, because a lot of, some people are, they're experienced in stupidity. Some people got a lot of experience in foolishness. So just because you got gray hair don't mean that you're, you're wise. You got to have the right experience. What's the right experience? Experiencing the revelation of God. See, and this, is, this is where a lot of us get tripped up right here. Because after a message like this or any message, and God is speaking, he's, he's given revelation, we, we want to kind of understand it. We want to wrap our mind around, okay, what's going to happen if I respond to that? What's going to happen if I step out in faith? What if? Then what? But what God... And then, and we're trying to wrap our mind around it, but God often withholds understanding until you step out in faith and respond. So it goes, it's, it goes from revelation to stepping out in faith and experiencing the revelation, and God now awakens your understanding. So he, Jesus tells the, the man who didn't have a, a, a hand, he says, stretch out your hand. What? Well, I don't understand. I don't have a hand. But as he, as he experienced the revelation, a hand grew and brought him understanding of what God was doing in his life. He tells Moses, Moses, stretch out your staff. What do you mean, God? This is wood. We need a boat. Well, that's what we need. Can you just give me a boat, God? But as Moses obeyed God and he responded and experienced the revelation, oh, oh I see, God, what you're, I see what you're doing. He tells Peter, Peter, come out of that boat. Come on, step out of that boat. Peter. Well, what's going to happen though, God? What's, what's going to happen? Are you going to, what if, what if? No, 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 no. You step out and experience. And as Peter stepped out and responded to the revelation of God and experienced it, his, he now was awakened in his understanding. Yeah. But he, even in Peter's case, he kind of got sidetracked and, and began to sink. And that's, I think, where a lot of us, we find ourselves in, in that similar place. Because a lot of us would probably say, look, pastor, I tried that. I tried to step out and, and, and do what God told me to do, but God didn't come through for me. I, 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 I started to sink. It just didn't, it didn't work out like I thought it was supposed to work out. Well, maybe God wasn't trying to give you victory in that space or season. Maybe he was trying to give you revelation for another season. Can I say that again? Okay, because you need to receive this, all right? Because maybe, maybe God, all he was trying to do was fix your perspective, to fix your vision. And maybe in that space and season was just to give you revelation for another season. So wisdom, wisdom then is understanding the experience of the revelation of God. I'm going to say that again. You want the wisdom of God? Wisdom is understanding the experience of the revelation of God. James chapter 1, back to James now. He says, don't deceive yourselves by just listening to the revelation. Don't deceive yourself and just listen to the word. Instead, put it into practice. God is speaking. He's speaking every week. He's speaking every time you open up your word. Don't be deceived experience it, respond to the revelation. Because if you listen to the word and you don't put it into practice, 
You're like the people who look into the mirror and they see themselves, and God is already giving you revelation. He's, he's showing some things to you, even in this message where, where there's some earthly wisdom in operation and some missteps. But once they walk away, he says, they forget what God showed them in the mirror, what God showed them in revelation. But if you look closely into the perfect law that sets people free, and you keep on paying attention to it, and you don't forget it, but you practice it, you do it, you respond to that revelation. You will be blessed by God in what you do. You will walk in the wisdom of God. Yeah. Now, I, I couldn't even teach this message without, without bringing you this, just this last point, because for a lot of you, the, the wisdom of God, there's, there's, the, there's a first step to the wisdom of God. See, because wisdom not only comes from God, but, but wisdom came from God. First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, says Jesus is the power of God. And Jesus is the wisdom of God. Wisdom is a person. So, no, 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 you don't need more answers. You don't need more solutions. You don't need more information. You don't even need to Google that anymore. What you need is Jesus. And that's the first step for a lot of you today. To receive the wisdom of God, you need Jesus, who is the person of wisdom. Let's start right there and bow your heads right all over the worship center, please. Bow your head.